All right, so the, the tail chaser, that was one thing that I put together uh, the past few days before 0.25 got released. Another one that I put together, see if I can load it up here. Let's load the Talon. I was having fun seeing what might be possible with these new parts. Here's a Talon. I like the Talons. Uh, it takes, uses these four of these, uh, not sabers, they're not sabers, rapiers. Yeah, we've got our, our new uh, uh, our shock, shock cone intakes. We have two cargo bays. Uh, we've got, what do we have back here? We have, it can dock, back up, dock just like the tail chaser does, or it can also dock uh, with the shielded docking port right there. I was wondering what to put on the nose, put yet another docking port, or, or what, uh, I hate the, you know, a lot of these, like the, this thing. I hate that. That's one of the worst parts of the entire game. It needs to die. And I hate it. But, and I thought, you know what? It, this, it works out that as far as the weight and balance of my vehicle is concerned, that the, the grabbing unit, the advanced, yeah, the AGU, is just about exactly the weight that I needed, and there's a chance that the thing could be useful. You know, if, there, if you need to uh, be manipulating something in orbit and the, you don't have exactly the docking port you need, uh, sure, it, maybe maybe it'll work. And that's because it's you know it's, the thing sticks its claws out there. That's why I decided to call it the Talon. <laughs> maybe it was a bad idea. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, okay, and I actually made two of these. That's the Talon, but we also have the Talon Bravo, which is almost identical. The only difference is uh, we shortened the, the cargo bay, so it's got you know about 75% of the cargo bay of the other Talon. This one can, but has the, crew, has the Mark II crew cabin so that it can carry four Kerbals in place of the, the reduced cargo capacity. Okay. So, yeah, we run, want to run a mission with the Talon. I uh, already set this up earlier. The mission for this one, we have a, a module that has the LVN, the nuclear engine, for, uh, for whatever other projects that we're going to use the LVN for. Uh, I want to run this thing up and dock that to the space station. Yeah, there we are. Bill Kerman is our pilot for today. We've got the thing strutted up so that it we have like a minimum of wobble. Remember that this is, uh, you know, we barely, yeah, this is this is this is unmodded stuff, so we don't have the the stock joint reinforcement happening. Okay, we've got this all set up. It's. Uh, the way this works is, you know, the first thing, yeah, we're going to use our sabers until we get all, all the way up. I, I like to use these to get into orbit and also to, uh, for, for our return. Uh, we have, if we're, for various orbital maneuvers, once we're actually in orbit, we'll use the, the RCS engines. Uh, thing to do first is to set the pitch, gotta put our, our takeoff trim. That's the word I'm trying to use. You want it set right about the halfway mark. Maybe just slightly under the halfway mark. Okay, I did some experiments with trying to use uh, SAS instead of trim, and it it's, ends up being very difficult to control in the first parts of the takeoff. I should have set the brakes while I was doing that. All right, throttle up, maintain the center line. Uh, first version of this, I tried using two of the Sabers and two of those the higher power jet engines. Uh, and that does work. It works fairly well. But then I, I tried this version and experimented around and found that this, that the, using the four sabers is actually more efficient. You have to be very careful, pay attention to this, and do not drag the tail. Lower the landing gear some, but there's only so much you can do. Pitch back more, and we got off the ground just before we reached the end of the runway. It's kind of like a point of pride to always be off the ground before you know, it's it that it's a really cheap and cheesy way to get off the ground is to run off the end of the runway. And that is a, a sign of faulty design, faulty design, and faulty piloting. <laughs> okay, uh, a more experimentation that I've done with this. You, you may be tempted to go ahead and try and, and you know do this dramatic climb and get some extreme altitude first off, but 
I've determined in my experimentation so far that really it's more efficient to maintain right about a 10 degree climb uh, through through the whole through the whole um, you know until until you're up to the very very upper reaches of the atmosphere uh, and you end up having more fuel to spare in orbit if we do this so it ends up being just small little changes with the trim to try and maintain yeah not where the nose is pointed but where the actual uh, velocity vector is right about 10 degrees above the horizon actually pitch down some I think oh that's one other thing I have to do let's try control through here because that changes things just a little bit go and oh man we're getting off that 90 degree line let's try and stay on that trim forward just slightly and okay trim back a little bit let's see I need to set this as my target I should have done that before taking off but it's okay yeah one thing about doing this um, it ends up being kind of a long drawn out pot pat a long drawn out process is the words that I was attempting to say uh, to get this thing to orbit. It takes several minutes to get in orbit. Oh, I forgot to mention that should you be want to have a heavier payload in here, I actually designed this so that you do have room that you can put some boosters underneath here on decouplers. Uh, you know, fuel tanks and, and engines or even a couple of SRBs underneath there. I've, t I've done experiments and it, it, and it is perfectly controllable with a couple of SRBs underneath. You can still take off and climb that way. Um, yeah, and that's certainly one option. But but what and that what I was really wanting to demonstrate really is is a true uh, single stage to orbit. And my usual plan is I want to keep on you know, leave the SAS off and just maintain the climb angle with trim and in just small control corrections. Uh, until we reach about 10 kilometers altitude. At that point, we start getting into some air where it, uh, it, the control surfaces begin to lose a little bit of effectiveness. The airplane wants to begin to wander in its, in its attitude and its direction. Uh, and then, so about 10 kilometers, I'll go ahead and I'll turn the SAS on. Somebody was asking me, they asked me as a question in one of the videos whether the island runway buildings are destructible, and I don't know the answer to that yet. I just thought of that. You know, it's starting to wander a bit. Let's go ahead and turn that SAS on now and maintain that climb angle. Pitch forward just a little bit. Hello. Pitch forward just a little bit, I said. Not a little bit, I said. This is one of the reasons why I hate the SAS in atmosphere thrust is increasing. Um, I, I chose to go through and I, I turned off the option to have these the, the sabers automatically switch mode from, from air breathing to, to rocket because that, that was having complications because of the fact that uh, we also want to shut all the air intakes and everything off at the same time. So I've got that set up to action group one. Action group one changes the modes and toggles all the air intakes. I expect to need that as we get up somewhere between 18 kilometers, 20 kilometers. Some of it, it doesn't always happen at exactly the same altitude. For, whoop, there we are. Yeah, 18.2 kilometers at time. Okay, guys. All right. And now we want to. Yeah, our thrust dramatically increases. back a little bit more, but still I want to maintain that 10 degrees, 10 degree climb. I don't think these are going to overheat. Alright, so the map view so I can pay attention to my apoapsis. Unknown object and tracking station. And again, we're off by 0.4 degrees. How about that? Okay, it's actually pitch forward some. You can see the timed apoapsis starting to get away from us. Throttle back some. Let's keep it at like an even two G's of acceleration through this. Okay, try and aim this thing mostly horizontal. Zero to 40 kilometers. 
Where is our target? Oh, wow, we're all the way over there. Tell you what, let's just aim for 100 kilometers right now. So our target's way back here. Okay, coming up fast on approaching 50 kilometers altitude. We'll just give it a little blips of the throttle to maintain that apoapsis at about 100 kilometers. And there's a Talon. Climbing away. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, I set this thing up uh, whenever, really whenever I was designing. Oh, that I just realized that that nuke is in here. Hang on. We need to give that thing its own stage so it doesn't it doesn't fire. I distracted myself, totally forgot what it was I was going to say. Here we're high enough. Uh, action group four opens up all the goodies and the widgets. Here we go. Let's move this down here. Move that up there. That's good. Eleven and a half minutes to get to this point. So yeah, the Honestly, this this vehicle it is not easy mode. It takes a lot of management. You have to pay attention to a whole lot of things while flying it. And I'm certain that yeah, there were some real pros at designing the the single staged orbit. Uh, who have come up with some much more efficient designs. Um, yeah, I'm not in any any way claiming that this is the the best design or anything, but it's the one I got. I like it. Okay, that one's 95, that one's just above 100. 101, okay. Yeah, that works. Close enough, yeah, at this point it doesn't really need to be a perfectly circular orbit. That is enough for me. Okay, so, I'm certain our throttle is at zero. Stage, hang on, stage again. Stage, that activates our monopropellant engines. And if you hit uh, action group number two, turns off the sabers. Yeah, action group number one switches the modes and and turns the the yeah toggles the air intakes. Action group two turns the sabers off. Action group three toggles the monopropellant engines. Number four opens and closes the docking ports and the cargo bay. And number five opens and closes the claw. It's the claw of doom. <laughs> Turn some lights on in this thing. <laughs> the canards. Uh, I'm expecting yeah, that whenever I try to port this design over and maybe modify it to actually work in FAR, uh, I imagine that we're probably going to get rid of those canards, as those will make cause some rather, uh, yeah, some, some issues with the stability. But they were necessary in order to give this thing p enough pitch control to be able to you know, take off and land reliably. Okay, matched inclinations with the station. 0 0.2 kilometers, I would think is what that's saying. Yeah, 0 0.2 kilometers, about as close as you can get. Estimated burn 11 seconds. Oh, I think their timing is actually going to work out correctly. All right now. Okay, so it's gonna go s scooting by us. All right, come on, guys. Let's point at the right place here. Almost there. Okay, okay, that part worked. And scoot towards it. Let's actually keep our direction indicator. We want to pass kind of underneath. I want to go to the opposite side of this docking adapter, the opposite side from the um, from the tail chaser. And I want to dock with this port here. We're not going to switch to control from there yet, as that's one complication is you do have the kind of a 90 degree change. Which makes things a little bit trickier. Good. About like that. That'll bring us to a halt. Now I want to 
control from here, which of course makes a big change of perspective. See if I can get my camera worked out. Okay, good. So I want to roll. Getting slightly farther away from it again. Pitch up. Yeah, center this. This would be... I mean, it's already difficult because of using the, this docking port and this change of perspective and everything. But it would be so much more difficult without this, this, this icon, this mod. Okay, now I want to translate right. Translate up. Except you can tell it's going too far this direction. Hang on, translate down. Uh, I guess I, this mark, that isn't pointing towards my target docking port. That's pointing towards like the center of mass of the thing or something. Huh. Okay. That's okay. We can still make it work. Back. Right. Okay, thud, bunt, crunch, bang. Come on. It's, it's there, it's attracting, it just won't stick. There we go, now it's stuck. Not exactly straight. Alright, so that was kind of inelegant. <laughs> inelegant and awkward and whatnot, but it did work. I think, we're, um, yeah, before we take our payload out of there, and that thing's going to dock up here, with, I believe our tail chaser is going to go home first. Well, this actually ends up taking a lot of time. I think I'm actually going to cease... Yeah, look at the clock. Cease recording, and then we'll come back and we'll do some more recording like tomorrow night. And we'll actually do the, the re-entry and landing of both of these. I didn't expect it to take this long to get both of these, get both of these docked, launched and docked. But it's fun! Yeah, a couple of space planes. Looking forward to, sh uh, to sharing the craft files with people so maybe they can try them. Maybe people will see, point out things that I've done wrong with the Talon, ways it could be improved. Okay, yeah, I'll stop and I will talk to everybody later. Goodbye!